Hey, happy Thursday. We had another terrible, terrible Monday here in the markets. Uh, this week we have Yellen and uh, Ben Chair Powell both testifying and a question of the week all about deflation. Somehow deflation has come up as this topic of conversation. So we've been talking about inflation nonstop and somehow here we are talking about deflation now. So we're going to talk about what that means, why that's a concern and you know why it's coming up here lately in, in the conversation. Uh, my name is Brandon Steele. I'm a financial advisor with Mainsail Financial Group here in Bellevue. And our goal every week is just to bring to you the market news, kind of weed out some of the stuff that, you know, may be uh, a little in the weeds and bring you the stuff that you can really use and uh, hopefully implement in some of your planning strategies. It is very dark out here, as you can see out in the Pacific Northwest. So uh, fall is definitely here, but um, hope everybody is, is staying dry. Uh, we'll jump into things here this week. Again, we have so much to cover. And although uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on home sales, I do want to mention this briefly that home sales have just continued to be strong. We've seen these numbers continue to creep up uh, this week included. And then as we look at um, some of the broader market movers here on Monday, we saw another big drop. So if you, for those who follow, this is the second week in a row that we've seen this pretty big drop here in the markets on, on Monday. Um, obviously, a lot of concerns. We'll talk about where that may be coming from. Um, and today is another good example. We've seen a lot of volatility today. So we'll see where we kind of close, but something to watch for sure. Um, on Tuesday this week, this is where maybe some of this is coming from. Tuesday this week, we had consumer confidence numbers come out and they were lower than expected. So I think what we are starting to see, and maybe this uh, started by some of the conversation around Evergrande and, and their debt concerns, um, that, you know, we've got potential taxes coming up. We've got a lot of these potential uh, impacts on the horizon to the market. And so I think we're starting to see a little bit of that confidence pull back a little bit. And I say that, but remember, confidence has been at like this extreme high. So, you know, keep that in mind that, that when I kind of paint this picture, it's from a very, very rosy background, right? Um, we also had Fed Chair Powell and Janet Yellen begin to testify and urging, urging everybody to push back this debt ceiling, which actually came through, it passed through the Senate uh, today. So I believe that that's all satisfied. And even off that news, you know, where we were at, at the time when the markets were down, we didn't really see a bounce back. So we've been hearing about this in the news all this time and wondering if this had something to do with the markets dropping. I didn't really think it did. It, it's clear now that it did not because the markets really didn't react to that news today. Uh, we also had initial jobless claims come out today, and again, it was up. We're at 362,000, so uh, not a good trend, something we definitely want to see reversed, and maybe this is tied to consumer confidence, some sort of confidence uh, concerns and, and hiring. be interesting to watch for sure. Maybe people are getting a little bit nervous um, and need kind of that next catalyst, I guess, to, to get things back up and running. Uh, coming up next week, we have a ton for you, too, before we jump into our question of the week. We've got income. We've got spending. We got inflation before we talk about deflation, uh, and it's jobs week, so we're going to have a lot of a lot of data to break apart here next week on the jobs front. Um, you know, one of the questions I have for you guys is if you think we will see a, a giant jobs number soon with the unemployment benefits ending. Um, you think we're in for maybe a big surprise to the upside as far as jobs either next week or maybe as we move into you know the the end of uh, October there for the or excuse me beginning of November for the October data. I think it's very possible we see that. So um, we'll be interesting to watch. And I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on whether or not that may trigger a giant um, jump in, in jobs added here soon. With all that, we'll, we'll wrap up with our question of the week. And um, I don't want to break apart deflation entirely. It's, it's a pretty complex, uh, <laughs> I guess, piece of, of the, the equation that is the market. But I do want to talk a little bit about what it means and why this is coming up and you know, like what, what deflation can really do to the markets if it were to come true. So deflation, as you might imagine, is just the 180 degree opposite of inflation. Basically deflation is suggesting that prices will actually come down, right? Not, not grow. Um, and you may be sitting there you know, with that definition going, well, why is that a bad thing? And as you might imagine, a small amount of deflation can actually be really good for the markets, right? If you have $100 in your pocket that once upon a time bought you one pair of shoes, and all of a sudden because prices drop, that $100 maybe buys you a pair of shoes and a, I don't know, a Costco pack size of socks, 
well, that's great, right? That means you are spending the same amount. It's not impacting you anymore. But what you're doing is you're buying more. You're increasing, um, you're increasing uh, spending and therefore increasing GDP. However, significant deflation is a little different story, right? If that's across the board, one of the challenges is it leads to less spending, not only on the consumer side, but also on the producer side of it or the comp- you know, corporate side of it, right? If, if prices are coming down like this, a lot of companies may slow down production. They may uh, peel back on their hiring or even see job cuts uh, within the company. And so this is where deflation can really start to become an issue. I personally, I, I don't think this is anything to worry about at this stage. So where this is all coming from is Kathy Woods, one of the um, one of the, the managers of ARC funds, which is this giant like tech company fund, has been talking about this. But keep in mind where Kathy is coming from is kind of making a point around technology funds, right? Which is her bread and butter. It's where she's made her name. It's where you know her company is entirely based out of or, or focused on, right? So just keep in mind that there may be a little bit of an agenda here. And she's even talking about looking out five years before we see this deflation issue come about. As you might imagine, to, fa- to, to forecast five years out is dang near as impossible as I'm sure you're already thinking it is. So you know it's possible, I guess, don't get me wrong, right? We have a lot of catalysts to higher costs and those may fizzle out over time. And in that case, prices certainly could come back. But to look out five years and say, this is what's going to happen, it's, it's, it's pretty impossible to make that forecast. So I'm not saying this may not be something in the future, but it is um, something in the future, right? Don't worry about it for now in my, from my eyes. Let's talk about inflation. Let's stick to the topic at hand. And as that kind of shakes its way out, it'll be something to watch. But you, you may hear more about this. Kathy Woods is a big, big name. So there's a lot of news around this today. And so we wanted to just kind of break apart what deflation is, why it's important, and you know why you may or may not want to kind of keep an eye on it. So thanks as always for joining us. We'll see you next Thursday at 3 p.m. Uh, if you do have any questions, please reach out. We'd love to answer your questions. And uh, if they make it on our weekly update, we will send a, a coffee on me to um, thank you for, for the great question. <clears throat> Excuse me. See you next Thursday at three. Stay dry and have a good upcoming weekend.